Hey guys and uh, welcome back to the Zabbix series and today we're going to talk about how you can upgrade your Zabbix installation. For me this will be a second attempt for this video uh, simply because somebody, me, forgot to turn on the screen recorder on this computer a couple of minutes ago and that's why we're shooting again. So long story short what you need to keep in mind and uh, what, we, what you need to do to upgrade your Zabbix installation successfully in uh, more or less in just a couple of minutes. What I have here on my computer is a clean installation with some old commands, uh, uh, clean installation of CentOS 7 without SL Linux, without a firewall. Uh, I did install a Zabbix 3.0 uh, Zabbix server, Zabbix agent and a Zabbix frontend. I am using MySQL, well actually MariaDB uh, database as a backend and we will be performing an upgrade of this installation. What you definitely need to do before even thinking about uh, actually executing some commands is reading the documentation. I know that uh, many companies and the vendors say please read documentation before doing this and that and uh, pretty often the people say like nah, come on I know how to upgrade the packages so I'm gonna be fine. Yes upgrade of the packages most likely will not cause any issues to you but you still need to read the upgrade notes for the version to which you are upgrading including those uh, major versions that are in between. So in our example I will be upgrading from 3.0 to 4.0 and of course it will also include an upgrade uh, to 3.2 and 3.4 but all of that will be happening automatically. Why do you need to read that? Not because uh, you would not know how to upgrade uh, the binaries or the packages but simply any major release of the Zabbix is, uh, keeps a lot of new things and you might miss some new configuration parameters. Uh, that needs to be tweaked based on your environment and the size of your environment. Some item keys, the syntax might change. As example, uh, during the upgrade to 3.2, if I'm not wrong, the actions with more complex conditions are disabled during the upgrade procedure. And information about those actions is written to the Zabbix server log file. So if you are not reading the upgrade notes, and let's say you are running just yum upgrade without checking the log files and all of the stuff that is produced during an upgrade you might simply miss those things out and then after a week or, or two or so you'll notice that something is not working uh, some processes are too busy uh, some actions are not working um, integrations and, and custom scripts are also not working which is of course bad and uh, you should avoid these situations and the best way how to avoid them is reading the upgrade notes before actually doing something. Then when you have read through the upgrade notes we can actually start with an upgrade procedure. What we need again documentation 6 uh, upgrade procedure upgrade from the packages because I've installed a clean 3.0 installation from the packages and a Red Hat Enterprise because I have a CentOS machine. Again, read all the stuff that is written here and keep in mind before the upgrade, read the relevant upgrade notes. And we can actually skip uh, in this video till the actual commands. Additional stuff that you need to think about. Backups, which is always a number one thing that you need to do. Perform a full backup of your database. If, let's say, well, depends on your company's policy, maybe you would not want to make a backup of the history. It will speed up the backup process like 10 hundred of times, but um, keep in mind that you're risking with losing all your history in case if something will go wrong. Uh, backup of the binaries, optional. Only in those cases if you are using some custom Zabbix sources with some patches, some customizations, and you're compiling um, the source is to create your own custom binaries then yes perform a backup otherwise not mandatory if something happens you can just grab them uh, from our official packages. Frontend files PHP same story if those are default PHP files no need to backup them if something happens so download the sources and there you go a clean default PHP files just copy paste them to your uh, web folder and you're good to go. 
Uh, if you have some customizations, patches, changes to the front end files, I do suggest to make a backup. Configuration of files like Etsy, Zabbix, Zabbix server underscore conf, um, agent conf also some uh, web configuration files. Yes, make a backup of those. It will take like additional 10 or 15 seconds, but it, it can save you in case if something will go wrong. Then uh, what else? I've mentioned the integration in some custom scripts. Remember, if you have some custom integrations with let's say some kind of ticketing system that is working based on the API, another reason why you definitely should read the upgrade notes. Maybe some API calls changed uh, how they work. Maybe some additional parameters or existing ones were changed and you need to prepare your integrations and your custom scripts for the, uh, for the new version to which you are planning to upgrade. So that's why it's again another point why it is important. Then when we got through all of that and we actually ready to do the upgrades, so we, we did the backups, we need to update repository configuration package. And again, uh, just like in most of our videos, it is a copy paste from documentation. Copy paste the line, open the CLI, paste it and click enter. Why this is important, I will also run a yum make cache. So, oops, like this. And uh, why am I talking? This will gonna finish. Why is this important? Uh, because if let's say we, we are running a Zavix 3.0, installed from the packages, everything is fine. And I decided to do an upgrade. Uh, let's say you're not familiar with all of those steps. You got approval from your management for a downtime. You run a yum upgrade Zavix server and you see that there's nothing to do, it is already recent version. Simply because remember when you install the Zabbix, you installed it from the repo of 3.0. In my case, it might be 3.2 or 2. something in yours. And uh, in that repo, in that box of the packages, you won't find the uh, 4.0 files. So that's why you need to upgrade the repository, which in my case is 3.0, and upgrade it to the 4.0 repository. Then uh, while this is still running, yes, internet speed is, is crucial. Uh, okay, looks like done. So I did upgrade the repository and then I can run, let's actually show that I indeed have a Zabbix 3.0. So Zabbix server minus capital V 3.028, Zabbix agent minus capital V 3.028 and the front end which I have here with my Zabbix server host is also 3.028. We need to stop systemctl stop Zabbix server, Zabbix agent and Apache, our web engine. Please do not stop the database. Remember that when you are running the major upgrade, you are upgrading the packages, the binaries of the Zabbix server. And when you will be starting it, the binary will perform an upgrade inside the database. So if you will stop the database, the upgrade will definitely fail. And when we did that, we need to type yum upgrade and the packages that we actually want an upgrade. So Zabbix server MySQL, Zabbix agent and Zabbix web MySQL. That's it, everything that I have on this box. Uh, we won't talk about a proxy and the Zabbix Java Gateway upgrade in this video, but simply keep in mind, uh, you see, updating and the version to which we will upgrade the binary, so 4010. Yes, I agree. Um, so simply keep in mind that if you are upgrading the Zabbix server, let's say it was a version 3.0, I am moving to version 4.0 you must, it is a mandatory to upgrade a front end to the same major version. You must upgrade the proxies to the same major version. And if you have a Zabbix Java Gateway, you must upgrade the Zabbix Java Gateway to the same major versions. Minor versions might change. So it is okay to have a Zabbix server version uh, 4010, proxy 405, front end 407 and Java Gateway 401. It is okay. It is not okay to have a Zabbix server 4010 and a proxy 3028. It's not gonna work. 
agents are backwards compatible so it is good to upgrade them and we're doing this in in this example but if you will skip the agents and let's say upgrade them later it's totally fine agent 3.0 will work without any issues with a Zybex server 4.0 so we did an upgrade and we can double check this by again executing Zybex server minus capital V you see it's 4.0.10 Zybex agent D minus capital V 4.0.10 all the processes are stopped. Front end is not accessible right now. Yep, not found. What we need to do, I will, yeah, again, uh, some leftovers from the previous video when, when I forgot to turn on the screen recorder. I will actually do the tail on the Zabbix server log file. You see that it is stopped and the version when it stopped is 3.0.28. And right now I will, uh, start systemctl start Zabbix server. When I will start it, it will automatically start the upgrade procedure. And you should definitely follow the log file of the Zabbix server, bar log Zabbix Zabbix server log. Because you will see this, the percentage, percentage of, of the upgrade, um, starting with a zero till 100 for each major version you are upgrading to, and uh, check to verify that there are no errors, that the upgrade is successful, the processes are started, and Zabbix is up and running. Now we can start systemctl start Zabbix agent and also Apache. No need to perform any kind of, uh, I don't know, any other changes in the CLI level. So we started Apache, we can reload our front end and you can see it is a 4010 with all the new functionality that we currently have in our latest 4.0 release. What else? Um, when you do the upgrade, it's actually, it's not like, okay, Zabbix upgraded, uh, I see in the logs 100%, the front end is opening, done. Not that easy. I would definitely suggest to keep on close eye on your Zabbix installation for a week, two or so. Because yes, it might be up and running, but just make sure that all of your items, all of your uh, custom checks, the processes, you know, the internal monitoring graphs, the internal process busy and data collector process busy. Uh, keep an eye to see that everything works as it should. So just to identify some possible issues that might happen and fix them before uh, there are actually some, some bad consequences. If you run an upgrade and uh, you start a Zabbix server and you see that it fails on, let's say, the 27%, check the error message, fix the problem, and run an upgrade again. That's why I definitely suggest to test your upgrades in the development environment. Um, it's very important, like if you know that you're going to upgrade and you have a big installation, an old one running from 2. Dot something or 1. Dot something, make a backup of your database, you can skip the history tables, it's not that mandatory in this case. Make a backup of configuration tables, move it to your development environment, restore from the backup and try, uh, restore from the backup, yes, and try to upgrade in the development environment. Check the logs. Was everything successful? If yes, good. If no, if you see some errors, you will be prepared when you will be doing an upgrade in the production. And uh, in that way, you will save your, your time. Uh, you will be prepared and uh, probably also there won't be any downtime. So you saw the upgrade procedure itself is pretty straightforward. On my clean installation, it took like uh, five seconds, I guess, the upgrade procedure itself uh, on the production, of course, it will be longer. How long? Depends on the size of your database, size of the tables that are affected by an upgrade, and also the speed of your disks, database, tuning, uh, configuration file, and stuff like that. So that's it from me today in a second time talking about an upgrade. If you do have any questions, uh, just post them in the comments. Um, yeah, that's it. Have a good, uh, have a good weekend, have a good luck, and uh, successfully run your upgrade on the Zabbix installation. Thank you guys and see you in the next videos.